Making an in-app purchase in iOS isn't as easy as simply making an API call. There's actually an entire pipeline that handles the purchase. Hey there, this is Brian, and in this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the process for you to make in-app purchases. And hey, if you find any of this valuable, definitely hit that like button. We would certainly appreciate your support. Okay, now most of the in-app purchase pipeline is actually pretty easy to follow, but here's the thing. Part of this pipeline is intentionally vague with the intent for, of developers to provide their own implementation. This increases the overall security of the purchase flow, preventing a one-size-fits-all type of hack. Okay, so here's, the, here's an overview of the entire process. The first thing you need to do is to define your purchases in iTunes Connect. Here you provide a description, a cost, and any other important metadata to be displayed to the end user. Next, when the app starts, you'll load in the reference names of all your purchasable items. From there, you'll fetch your product info for all your purchasable items from Apple's servers. At some point, you'll provide a user interface element so your users can actually buy, a pro buy your product. When they tap on an item, the purchase UI will be displayed to the end, to the end user. Now, this is an automated part of the process that iOS handles for us. When the user actually agrees to the payment, then you'll request payment from the App Store. You'll receive a response, and here's where you'll need to process the transaction. Now, this is the part where things get a little bit dicey. You'll get a receipt, and reading app receipts involves decrypting the receipt and validating the contents. Now, how you do this is really up to you. This is the vague part of the process. Apple doesn't provide a single solution, so you'll need to provide your own. Now, you can either validate receipts on the device, or you can actually send out the receipt to another server to handle the validation. Once you process the, once you process the transaction, you then can finally unlock the content for the end user, but believe it or not, that's not the end of the process. You must finish the transaction, and this is the important step. If you don't let Apple know that you've processed the transaction, Apple will think the transaction is an unfulfilled transaction and it will keep on sending back the transaction until it has marked complete. This means every time your user starts up your app, it's going to get that transaction. That's the entire flow. And of course, the first step is to add your purchases. We do that in the complete course, which you can find over at raywinderlich.com. But we'll be adding in more in-app purchase videos to this channel, so keep checking back. Cheers.